When I explain Mahalo, the search service that I'm CTO of during my day job, I usually describe the search space as unfinished. There's still room for massive improvement. I then typically contrast this with the software domain that is finished. Microsoft Word, for example. Word processing, by and large, is solved. You could make it maybe 3 or 4% better, but the massive innovation is over, done, finite. And then along comes some bloke from Cornwall, England, who proves me utterly wrong. Scrivener utterly reinvents what word processing should be for novelists everywhere. After hearing four previous bibliotech guests rave about how this product has changed the way they write, I gave it a shot, and I'm hooked as well. I'll never go back to Word. So please join me in welcoming the inventor of Scrivener, Keith Blount. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me on the show. Hey, thanks for uh, staying up late. It's, uh, what, one in, the, one in the morning there, something like that? Yeah, yeah, just after one in the morning here, yeah. Well, we, we certainly appreciate you. Uh, sorry? <laughs> Hence the bags under the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, we certainly appreciate you staying up. Um, so what is Scrivener? What, what makes it different in your words? Um, well, I guess Scrivener is mainly about, um, whereas uh, something like Microsoft Word is a more a linear word processor where you, you start at the beginning of a document and um, work all the way through it. Um, with Scrivener, it's more about um, taking a document and enabling you to break it up into smaller chunks and to work on... Um, on a long document such as a novel or a screenplay or a thesis, um, uh, part by part, so you can break it down into, into scenes or chapters. And so you're kind of just uh, you're working uh, on, a, on a much smaller level. Um, and at the same time, it gives you tools to, to um, get a grasp of the structure of your work, such as a cork board and such like. And, um, and at the same time, you can, you can refer to research, so you can look at more than, uh, more than one document at the same time. And, uh, and refer to different images and PDF files. Uh, so the, the main idea is just kind of uh, enabling you to get a, a grip on, uh, on a large document rather than having to look at it as one long hole and scrolling through one long document all the time. I have to admit, I mean, that, that is in fact how I tend to work. I basically will go, but I thought it was odd. And it, it turns out, you know, I was using Microsoft Word um, like I now use Scrivener. Um, and I would basically start, uh, the way I tend to write is I write in the middle, I start in the middle. And I basically will scribble out this scene, then I'll scribble out that scene. And it's, it's very often not in order, in fact, very specifically not in order. And so and as, I, as I make these things, they start growing into one another, and that will eventually form the whole novel. And, and what I, <laughs> it seems Scrivener was, has been custom made for that, and I guess maybe I'm not that odd <laughs> after all. Maybe more people work like I do. Um, what, why did you decide to do this? What compelled you to uh, create this tool? Um, well, yeah, I guess uh, coming from a, a very similar angle to yourself, I was trying to, um, I mean, I, I was working on both a, a thesis at the time and also trying to, trying to write a novel. I've been trying to write a novel on and off since, since I was 20. And um, so I was, I was kind of like you working uh, on different parts of it at the same time. I'd have ideas and uh, I'd be writing that into different Word documents. And um, so I was fed up. I, I, why I tend to, why I tend to work, I'd have... Um, hundreds of Word documents in different Finder um, folders and I'd constantly be switching between them and in order to get an overview of them occasionally I'd go through each of them and, and try and kind of get write a synopsis of each of them and work out where they went in a larger work and so really I was just kind of fed up with that process of trying to, trying to keep a, a grasp on lots and lots of different documents and I wanted, uh, I wanted a piece of software that would um, enable me to, to have all that kind of in one place so I went out there and looked at the different pieces of software but that would allow me to do that. And there were a few kind of that, that were heading in that direction, but none that really did what I wanted it to do. So um, from there, I taught myself how to, how to program um, Coco and uh, yeah, wrote Scrivener really. So, what is your background? Are you actually a software engineer by training, or? Uh, no, no, I'm not. Um, until last year, I was uh, I was a primary school teacher teaching uh, fifth year, which uh, you guys call fifth grade. Um, and before that, I, was, I did an MA in medieval studies, and then I was working at the NHS, a health service, and uh, kind of various jobs, really, because I'd always kind of, you know, I was, I was going to be a, a Booker Prize winning novelist, obviously, by the age of uh, 26, 10 years ago. Um, so I had lots of different jobs and, and then teaching before I, I, I got into this. So this really started out as a, as a hobby of me trying to write the piece of software that I wanted. And it kind of just turned into uh, into something that I ended up doing full full time. I went full time last year. So uh, so let me get this straight. So you basically taught yourself how to program so that you specifically so you could make Scrivener. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, I, I taught myself program so I could program Scrivener. Yeah. Now, did somebody else help you out? I mean, or did you were you completely self-taught? Uh, no, completely self-taught. Was, I mean, the great thing about um, I mean, Scrivener being only for the Mac. The great the great thing about the Mac is there's uh, there's some really great books. Um, out there, but I found a lot back when I was using Windows. I tried to teach myself some uh, some programming on Windows. I never really got very far with it. But there's a couple of good back, good books that I bought um, for Mac programming. So yeah, it was, it was self-taught from books basically. Okay, so now, um, so it was about a year ago. You said that you uh, you actually did Scrivener. You that you started working on it. Uh, How long has it been around? No, no, I'm after. Sorry. How long has it been around? Is basically what I'm after. It's been around. Oh right, okay. So I think I started working on it probably about five years ago. It's been. It was. The official release for Scrivener 1.0 was um, beginning of 2007, January 2007. It was in public beast testing for a few months before that, and then it had kind of uh, it was in an earlier version, um, which was out in public probably about a year before that. So it's kind of, it kind of started out um, 2006 when it actually made an early release, officially 2007. Okay, so um, that's fantastic. And so, how, how did people find out about it? I mean, do you advertise? How does how did it sort of Initially, when you first released it, how did people find it, and then how have you been watching it grow? Um, well, initially, actually, I, I posted about it on um, NaNoWriMo, the forums, you know, the, the National Novel Writing yeah, um, sure. Month forums. Um, so initially, I, I just posted there for beach testers. Um, that's where I got my initial group of, of, um, of users. And uh, they liked it, and they started telling other people about it. So it's really word, word of mouth. Um, we have done some advertising over the past year, but that we've we've kind of found that advertising really doesn't do as much for us as people just going out there and, and speaking about the product. So um, yeah, the first first users were from NaNoWriMo. Yeah, I mean we couldn't shut people up about it on the show. I mean they kept people kept coming on the show <laughs> and telling me about it. I'm like I have to know more about this. So um, that, was, that was exactly how I found out about it. Um, so do you, I mean, I imagine you probably have some famous authors that are using it now. Do you, can you, anyone you can name? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, there's some, there's, there's, uh, there's a guy called Neil Cross who, uh, who uses it. He's, he's, a, he's an author. He also wrote, wrote um, the, uh, some of the scripts to, I don't know, there's, there's a TV show over here called Spooks. I think it's called MI5 in America. And so he's, uh, there's, um, there's a guy called Michael Marshall Smith who's a, a thriller and science fiction writer. Um, there's a guy called Mike, Mike Sussman who works on, uh, who's worked on Star Trek. Um, yeah, there's, 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 quite, there's quite a few people using it. And do you worry about uh, Final Draft or MS Word sort of supersetting you and, and encroaching on your market? What's, what's your sort of feeling about the competitive landscape? Um, not really. I mean, because Scrivener kind of fits in, uh, in between. I mean, but, but with Word and, um, and Final Draft really aren't competitors because they're, they're more, as Final, as, as Final Draft kind of suggests, it, it's for the Final Draft, whereas uh, Scrivener really fits into the process before you get to that final formatting stage. So, um, I mean, we're, we're actually in partnership with Final Draft. You can export your work to, um, to Final Draft and you ex export it to Word. So, um, no, I'm not really worried about, about Word or Final Draft and encroaching on that sort of thing because we, we really kind of do quite a different thing. We're more about getting organizing and structuring your first draft and then eventually you would, you would end up most likely taking your, your work from Scrivener into a word processing program such as Word or Pages or, or if you're doing a script into Final Draft for that, that, that final part of the process. So, um, so Scrivener is really when you have a blank sheet of paper really and, and you're just starting off. Yeah, kind of. It's, it's, it's getting those initial ideas in it and getting that first draft written and structuring your first draft and, and getting the words down on, on paper is kind of the idea. Okay, well, Keith, um, you know, we've been talking about it. Let's see Scrivener. Okay, well, you should be able to see on the screen now, um, this is just the opening screen Scrivener. Can you see that okay? Yep, I'm seeing it just fine. Okay, so um, this is just the screen you see when you first go into Scrivener. So I'm just going to create a new project. Um, so when you build a new project, you've got a, a list of different um, types of projects uh, you can start. So there's a novel, screenplay, and so on. So I'm just going to start an empty project. So are these all just like different templates, or yeah, that's right. They're just different templates. You can make your own templates as well. I mean, really, they're just kind of um, they're just kind of a pre just, just presets, really. So um, you can make any type of, any type of template you like. So I'm going to create a test document. Okay. Um, so here we have the uh, the main interface that you see when you first create uh, a new document. Um, so the main the main parts of the interface on the left you've got what we call the binder, which is kind of a regular Mac style source list, and on the right is the main editor. And in the binder you've got three main folders. So you've got um, the draft folder at the top here, and you can see that's gone into corkboard mode there. But um, the draft folder is where you store, um, as it kind of suggests, your draft. So that's where you put all your text documents. Um, 
which will go into your final manuscript, um, which you'll compile into one long manuscript later. And then you've got a research, a research folder where you can keep any research files, um, images, PDF documents, so on, any trash, file, trash folder where you just put any, any documents that you don't want anymore, obviously. Um, so if I just bring in some files, um, so I've just got some files to import. So if I, there's a Word document and an RTF document here. So if I just drag those into a, the binder there. Okay. And so you can see that you have you can have lots of different. Um, so each documents. document got imported separately as its own scrivening, if you will. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you if you wanted to, uh, you could you can merge these documents if you wanted to. Um, so if we have a test document here, um, you can you can merge them. Or, or if you want to, when you, if you brought in say say you've got a long Word document and you want to bring it in Scrivener. Um, what you could do is if you bring in the, doc, the whole Word document, you can then split it up. So what I could do is, um, if I put my cursor here, I can go to um, Documents, Split at Selection. And then that will, that will split that down to two documents. So as I was saying, the idea in Scrivener is that you're working um, with lots of small um, sections of text. So the idea um, is that it atomizes everything. And so basically it takes what was once a big, giant, honking document with lots of markup in it, and it turns it into something which is um, much more like software. I, at least that was my experience. So that you know, each of my chapters, each of the scenes in each of my chapters is almost like a little routine. And I can move them around if I decide I want to take a scene from one chapter and put it in another, or rearrange the order of the chapters. Everything is now dynamic and is no longer sort of tied together and, and hardwired together at, at, the, at the hip. That was sort of, that, that's what I've seen. That's what, would you say that's correct? Yeah, that's, I mean that's exactly it. I mean that's exactly the main point. If you bring in in, in a, a long document, you could it up so you've got it in all small sections. Exactly, it atomizes it, and um, and you can then work in small sections as well. Um, so, like I say, you can you can just move these these documents around however you want, and um, if you have broken them down to small sections, you can also then view them as a large section again if you want to. So, if I select, for instance, uh, say these two documents here, um, if I click onto the if I select different documents, you see them in corkboard over here. Um, if I select these two documents and click on Edit Scrivenings at the top, the Edit Scrivenings feature allows you to just combine those documents dynamically. So now you can see both those two documents. Um, so they're, not, they're not really combined here. They're just you're displaying them as combined so that you can work on them as though it's one big document conceptually, but still under right. the hood they're still atomized and they're still separate. Correct? Yeah, exactly. Under the hood, they're these two separate documents, but then you can just combine them dynamically just so you work on them. Just so that if you're working in lots of different scenes, you can uh, you can combine them to see how all those scenes work as a whole chapter whilst you work on them. So you can work on them as, a, as an individual scene or as an individual chapter. Or you could combine different chapters together to see how they work together. So yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Um, and, or, or you can look at those on, a, uh, on the cork board. Um, the idea with the cork board is um, that each document in, that you've got in the binder, you can associate a synopsis with it. So if I open the inspector over here, over here we've got a uh, an area that we could just a little index card and we can use this to enter a synopsis so um the synopsis really is just used to tell us what a document uh, is about um so this tells us i mean so, so really the idea i mean you could you could, you could auto generate that as well so if i select document and click this button here i'll just auto generate one um so if i then look at all these documents on a court board um you can see that that synopsis i just typed is on this card here so the idea idea behind that really is just that um if you want to get a good overview of your work as a whole, and you don't have to just look at all the, at the text itself, you can just look at um, each document represented by a synopsis, and then you can just drag them, drag the synopses around, which um, in turn drags the documents with which are associated around. Um, so yeah, yeah, as you say, the whole idea is that you break bring everything down into smaller parts, and um, and then the other thing is that. You might want to bring in research. So I've got a I've got an image file and a PDF file over here. If I bring those into a research file folder, then um, I've got this PDF file file here, um, and an image file that I can look at, and uh, I can split my view. So I can be referring to a, an image or a PDF document in one split, and in the other doc in the other view, I can be working on my text. Hmm. I've actually not used that one yet. I'm have to check that one out. <laughs> right. So what what else uh, what else do you want to show us? Are there any other features you think you should highlight? Or okay, well, um, as well as the uh, as well as the corkboard, you if you're not so keen on the 
the corkboard uh, metaphor, then you can also view things as an outliner. Actually, if I bring in, if I get rid of this document and bring in a uh, a more complicated. Yeah, I was going to say actually, my my feeling on this is that it's a lot easier to sort of understand the value of this when you have something that's massive and it's, yeah. you've just got all kinds of crazy stuff everywhere. That's where suddenly Scrivener pops to life and you see, oh my god, this is so much easier to deal with conceptually. And I, and I think probably you don't even, maybe even just showing it the way we're showing it doesn't even get across how much better it really is. It's more like you have to be in front of your own document and deep into, you know, a hundred thousand word piece to really just get how much this makes your life easier. That's been... I guess, yeah, I guess so. Cause, I, mean, you, I mean, you certainly wouldn't want to use Scrivener to say, right, This, uh, this is just a, this is a test document I, I use on the website sometimes, just here, which is just kind of a, a kind of a dummy novel. Um, so in this one, you can see that um, in the draft folder, which has been renamed manuscript here, um, you've got all the different chapters broken down, um, and each of those broken down into different scenes. And I mean, you can structure this how you want, so you can drag your scenes around. And then, so you, say in this particular chapter here, which is the frozen chapter here, you've got each scene that you can take a look at. Or you can look at each of those scenes on the court board or in the outliner. And um, so it really is, you're just breaking everything down. And then you've got all your research available as well. I mean, the, I mean, the whole idea, as I was saying, that the, um, the idea is getting all of your draft into this, uh, into this manuscript folder or draft folder. I mean, I mean the, idea, the idea is eventually you're going to want to get all these documents. Um, so we've got a title page here and everything. You're going to want to get all these documents out into one long document um, for submission or whatever. So we have a compile draft feature or compile manuscript feature here. And what that does is allow you to, um, to export or print your work. Um, let's look at that. As, a, as one long manuscript. So you can get all of your work out. So the, the whole idea is that you're breaking everything down and then you can get everything out as a long document later. So basically, with the format that it's outputting, is that that's a PDF? I think I'm seeing there, correct? Uh, yeah, I've just yeah, because I've got to print. Um, you could you can export it as RTF, doc, um, docx, basically most of the popular for file formats, or you can print it. Uh, and the other thing is that um, I mean, this this PDF document here is uh, in standard novel manuscript format, so it's it's um, it's in a courier font, double double spaced. But the text itself doesn't have to be written that way. So a lot of these documents aren't written in courier. Yeah, um, that's that. Actually, to me, that was very important because I tend to, um, you know, I learned how to write uh, with a word processor, and so I tended to use the fonts, and I tended to, you know, imagine it was a real novel that I was setting. Yeah. I mean, it made it made the process a lot more real to me to use actual fonts that would be in the actual final product, so I could actually see the pages exactly as how they were. So, um, for me, writing in Courier is I actually have a tough time doing it for some reason, and uh, right. whereas people who sort of start off in the typewriter world clearly don't. So. Uh, yeah, there's definitely different schools. I, I mean, I don't like writing in Korea myself, myself. But if you get when you want to get a manuscript out, you, you're going to need it most likely in Korea or Times. So um, you can override that. So yeah, um, I, I mean, I, I like writing in Optima. So I, most of these documents are written in Optima. Um, but then when you export it, that all gets in the export, um, the compile, compile sheet. You can choose to override all of your formatting here. So I mean, if you, you can choose not to override it and use the fonts that are in the, the documents. Or you can change them all to something on the export the export stage. Cool. Um, so has this helped? So how has this helped you in terms of your writing? Have you, you said <laughs> you mentioned before that uh, you kind of got sidetracked five years ago? You're writing your own novel and wanted to have this word processor, this magical word processor. It was a novel word processor. It didn't exist. So you stopped and started writing this. Sounds like you got a little sidetracked. That you didn't really you didn't finish the novel. You finished Scrivener. Is that kind of correct or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of been like the greatest uh, procrastination tool ever. Um, it's it's kind of like I can write the novel, but only once I've written my own software to do it. And <laughs> and so now I've got sidetracked onto onto version two of Scrivener. Um, so yeah, I, I keep working on it, but it's uh, yeah, it keeps getting put off. Definitely. Okay. Um, so what is what is next for Scrivener? What is what is version two? What does that entail? Um, well, there's quite a few. Uh, the main the main thing. For Scrivener 2 is uh, it's a big refinement. So a lot of the things that maybe I was never quite as happy with in 1.0, or that I got user feedback about, have um, has, has kind of been changed. So, for instance, the, the edit scrivenings feature that I showed, um, where you can combine different documents into one document, 
um, and the court board and the outliner. They all kind of work as alternate modes in, Scri in Scrivener 2, so they're, they're all a lot more, a lot more integrated. Um, there's also a page layout view. Um, Scrivener 1 hasn't had a page layout view, but there's a page layout view in, uh, in 2, for uh, mainly for screenwriters because they need that. Um, there's more export capabilities, so you'll be able to export your novel as an EPUB book in Scrivener 2, so you could um, so you can uh, export directly to uh, to do your own um, e-publishing. Really? Um, so, and by that, are we talking about the uh, the Kindle specific format? Um, no, it's just EPUB. I mean, um, we don't even get the Kindle in in the UK, so I haven't been able to test ah. anything like that, unfortunately. <laughs> Got but it. Um, I think I think there are tools where you can convert the EPUB format to Kindle. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but so VPUB is used like um, in, in programs such as Stanza or Adobe Digital Editions, and uh, the Sony we could use it. It's yeah. um, it's just one of the standard ebook e formats. Um, so um, yeah, um, uh, along with that, there's uh, there's some new comments features that are coming in Scrivener, kind of a, a, a upgraded interface. It's um, yeah, there's, there's kind of a, a lot of uh, small features that haven't been announced yet as well. Okay, great. Um, and then what else? What else? Sort of in the uh, the tech and novel space um, excites you personally? I mean, have you taken a look around at you know what do you think of the, of the Kindle things like Scribd, um, the I books on the iPhone? What, what's sort of making you interested right now? Um, I, I, yeah, I keep hoping that Apple will do their own uh, their own ebook reader at some point, but they keep saying they're not going to do it. Um, so as I say, we. We just haven't got access to the Kindle in the UK, so I haven't even been able to get my hands on one as much as I'd like to. Um, so I've got a Sony Reader. That's, I, I do really like the Sony Reader. I'm kind of looking forward to see, seeing where they go with that sort of thing. Um, the iPhone, um, books on the iPhone. Yeah, there are, there are some quite nice readers. I don't really enjoy the reading experience on, a, on an iPhone. It's just, it's just a bit too small. But um, Apple have got a tablet coming out soon, or the rumors, the rumors about the Apple tablet. So we'll see. Yeah, it's the worst kept secret in the world, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing seeing what EPUB uh, EPUB software they have for that. Okay, great. Uh, well, we're almost out of time, but uh, I have one last question that's on everyone's minds here. Um, when you went to Hogwarts, were you in Gryffindor or Slytherin? <laughs> Slytherin. Slytherin. <laughs> Don't all I thought all I thought all British people went to Hogwarts. Is that not true? Is that no? It's rumor? absolutely true. We 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 all go to Hogwarts. Absolutely. That's what that's what we think here in America. So good, good to know. <laughs> good to know we were correct. Absolutely. So uh, all right. Well, I want to uh, give special thanks to you, Keith, for uh, showing up on the show so late at night for you. And of course, want to thank Jason Calcanis, who makes the show possible. Uh, Mood Organ, who supplies the opening music. Music. This is Bibliotech. We'll see you next time.